welcome to the Thirsty Mage, the RPG podcast whose winter vacation through retro games has just taken a right turn onto a luxury yacht. Yes, I am your host of this episode, David Lloyd. And yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, some new ways to play those old games that we love so much. And uh, maybe we'll uh, even talk about some other classics or get to play some other classes that we just happen to miss over the years as well. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the year of the retro game. While we're waiting for some big games to come out, uh, I know I've picked up a couple different hardware pieces to play some retro games that I'm uh, looking forward to talking about. And with me tonight is a man who's enjoying his own retro fun uh, while riding the Octopath Redemption tour bus. It's Casey Gibson. Yes. Yeah, who knew it was going to be such a, a sweet, sweet ride? It's funny because I put like 60 hours into it and I, I'm I'm into the ending chapters. And it's one of those things I've played. I got it for Christmas. So we're coming up on I've had it for two months almost. And it's been like just with everything going on, like a, I guess slow burn, but not, you know, I've, I've definitely been putting in the time. But I feel like now having fought some of these uh, last chapter bosses, I feel like I've like I probably have another like 20 hours. <laughs> it's like I was like, what game can I squeeze in before Final Fantasy seven rebirth? And at this point, I'm like, just get Octopath done for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oh, I'm feeling the same way about uh, infinite wealth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just been chipping away at it and I got I got stuck in this one. So there is um, it's not really a spoiler or whatever, because I think everyone knows Kiryu is in the game, but. There's this there was this one <gasps> chapter where uh, where Kiryu is like kind of reliving the past sort of in a way where it's like he's going around town kind of looking at these nostalgic things or whatever. And they kind of hint to the like and, and he gets stronger as he goes to each one, like he's kind of be- re-becoming the, the dragon of Jojima. Mm. And uh, they kind of insinuate that he needs to, to be full strength for for something that's coming up. And I'm like, oh my god, are they like if I don't go get all these things, does this mean Curio dies? Is this like <laughs> some kind of like good ending to the scenario? So I've like spent way too much time just <laughs> going going into all these things, and I'm like way over leveled at this point. Like it's funny because there's like two different parties. The the the, the game ends up splitting. Uh, I guess slight spoilers here. Uh, if you're playing Infinite Wealth, uh, we'll be talking about it uh, in an episode shortly, but. Uh, there, there is a fork around the midpoint of the game where there's like some people go one way, some people go another way. And so like one of my branches that has Kiryu in it is probably like 15 levels over overpowered to the point where I like two shotted the boss in the last <laughs> chapter. Over prepared. I'm like way over. I'm like, whoa, I spent way too much time. And and the, the problem was too is that I didn't realize I would have more opportunities later in the game to to get the things that I was running mm-hmm. around getting. So it's like I didn't need to spend all that time, but I guess Still overkill. I, yeah, well, it, it never feels bad to be over prepared, you know. Yeah. Well, that was even like uh, the the first boss I took on. You know, all the last chapters in Octopath, uh, for, I guess the recommendation level of recommended levels forty five. So I got everyone to forty five. My main was like in the fifties, and then by the time I got to the boss. I was like in I, everything was right around level 50 or more. And and I still was like getting <laughs> yeah. and I was like, OK, I got to go get some some different gear and maybe some, you know, I, I think the uh, like amulets and stuff come in the, to help like the negate or or maybe not negate, but like lessen specific uh, damage types. So yeah. that, that definitely helped. But yeah. I'm really loving it. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit of Octo. I don't know if we're just getting right into that. Or... Yeah, we can, we can jump right in. I always love a good Octo. My memory's a little hazy on it. Um, I remember we were talking about it the other night and uh, about those the bosses and how, man, man, like some of those bosses are pretty tough uh, yeah, in that game. I feel like most of the game hasn't been too crazy difficult. I mean... There, I've, there's been a boss here or two at a different chapter, you know, because essentially I've, you know, my main is Casty, which is the uh, apothecary, and so she's obviously way higher level than everyone, right? Because you can't take your main out, so that's just sort of nature of the beast. They always end up being higher level, mm-hmm. and you know, I've been trying to rotate all the other pieces in in my party to just keep them all around the same level. But uh, but yeah, so I've, I've run into like maybe one or two bosses along the way, you know, when I had my lower level people that it was a tough fight, but was able to get through or maybe I died once and like 
fixed one thing up and it was good. But yeah, these last bosses uh, have definitely been been proven to be a, a challenge for sure. Uh, but it felt super good after I beat. Um, so I've I've killed Oswald or I. I didn't kill him. Uh, I finished his story, I should say. And um, so I'm one out of eight and it was cool. And and I really, the, the game it's structured pretty much pretty wide open, right? Like when you first get in there, I remember talking to you, I was like, is like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you sort of do the first chapter of your main character you pick and then the map opens up and you can sort of really go anywhere. Uh, and, and, you know, I, it was daunting because Oswald was one that I really wanted to go. Like he interests me, his story, but he was so far away. And I was like, do I work over there? Like, and you're like, yeah, you just sort of can, you know, travel at, at will uh, if you, you know, and, and sure enough. So it's cool to be able to tackle the different uh, quests uh, or storylines, you know, in any order you really want. Of course, there are some, you know, where I think it was Ochet, like her, like the, the second to last chapter and then the last chapter it was like level like 30 and then it jumped up to 45 so like likely you wouldn't you know marathon those two so there is definitely yeah. probably a path that people tend to follow but you could very you know veer off left and right a little bit along the way in terms of the order you do it unless if you just really like grinding i guess you can <laughs> you know grind that out but uh but yeah it's it's really great because I just feel like I remember in Octopath one doing the first chapters and then like it, it was like I felt like I had to do five hours of grinding to go do chapter two. It and was I, a slog. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, what the heck, you know? So here there have definitely been a few points where I've grinded a little bit, but it's been for like a half hour, you know, or like 45 minutes, maybe watch an episode or something and just sort of kill some bosses to to just get everyone sort of leveled up to like. Pretty much, um, I think I spent an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half, just grinding out to get everyone up to level 45. So I felt like I could go take on the last, gr you know, last group of each area pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Little did I know. Uh, but I'm thinking hopefully <laughs> with all the leveling up, by the time I get to the, the second half of the, the bosses, my guys will all be like maybe in the 50, mid 50s, you know, plus and, and maybe I steamroll. But uh but yeah, I've really been enjoying the different stories. Uh, they're, they're all pretty interesting in their own right. You know, you get the crossover chapters where you start to see the characters interact, like their their stories intertwine a little bit, which is cool. And and of course, the, the 2D HD uh, is just wonderful, right? It's, yeah. it's funny because I've played a handful of games in the style, but never all the way through, right? Like Octopath, I fell off of. I played the demo of Triangle Strategy. I played the demo of Live Live Alive or Live Live, whatever it is. So I've never actually played one for like a huge chunk. And and like I said, I've just really, really been enjoying it. Yeah, well, and the other great thing about the final bosses is like the, the music is incredible throughout the game, like mm -hmm. no, pretty much across the board. But they save like the bangers for the boss fight. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. really good music in those boss fights. I don't know if you I, I'm trying to remember her name, but there is the the dancer. There's like oh, this rivalry Agnia? with the dancer. Oh, wait. yeah. So and, what was the second part of that with? Well, there's a so there's so there's the, there's the dancer, but then she has like the rivalry with the with the other dancer. Throughout oh, the, the game. huge dancer. Yeah. Yeah. I forget her name specifically. Yeah. But uh, the, like the music and I, I guess I. I I don't think I'm spoiling it for you by saying that she's the the final final boss in in her little thing, but <gasps> she uh, the music in hers was incredible. Like it's like this opera thing. Like it's just whoo whoo man. Mm -hmm. Like that. Uh, I'm looking uh, forward to that. Yeah, you got, you got a treat coming. But so you said you you've done um, Ochets and Oswalds. Uh, do, do you yeah, know well, which one you're doing next? Or uh, well, I need to finish Ochets. I, I haven't gotten to go back. I'm on the boss. Um, I think I might level up my guys like one or two more levels, and then just go fight it off. Because I've noticed the these bosses they usually have a few phases, right? <clears throat> it's yeah. like it's like two phases, and then they go like in rage. Where like the last <laughs> phase, it's like right because you can when you uh, hover over uh, an enemy to attack in battle, uh, if you know their name, it says their name or, or what kind of enemy they are. Uh, and if it's in like white normal text, it's they're at like you know 
I don't know the exact percentages, right? But they're healthy. Then it gets yellow when they start getting a little lower. And then it's red when they're on like critical, like they're going to die soon. So when these guys turn red, uh, all of a sudden, like they're attacking like three times per turn, like stacked up. And, and it just gets, it overwhelms you, right? Like if, if you're already in like sort of a bad position health wise and you, and you can't top your people off, like you're probably not going to win, you know? Yeah. So it, it's definitely interesting to see that it is. Uh, but as far as the next one, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, like, I don't know. May, maybe Throne. Oh, Throne yeah. Might, That's, might the next that one. boss is, uh, boss is, the boss is, is nuts. <laughs> Uh, so maybe I'll save that one for a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I, you could probably, you could probably beat him. Like I, I don't know. He was difficult, but you could like not, not. I don't know if he was necessarily the most difficult of the final bosses, but the the story just takes like a wicked right to like left turn. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> and, and the boss is like it kind of insane. Like, like, oh okay then. Yeah. It's like oh this is this is how this just this is how this went. eh? oh. Sh- <laughs> like, oh, I'm gonna have to choke up with that one. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> but it, yeah, like it's oh, just uh, I don't know. A few of those bosses just kind of go off yeah, the rails, crazy. though. So it's yeah, it's really good. What what's your um? I I know like you, you said you have like a few people that are like a main party. Like who who you've been maining for the most part? Like do you got a favorite four right now? Yeah, so it's po- obviously Casty. I got to use right. She's my main. I really yep. like her. uh Late what Latin latent power or whatever what I forget what it's called it starts with an L. When you take damage, it slowly builds up, and then you get to use like a superpower. And like for her, she gets to make her concoctions uh, without using any materials. Yeah. So like you could pretty much just f- fill up the group with full health, full magic. You know, I I usually do that, and then like uh, BP give them extra you know moves, but. Usually it's been her. I like Oswald. Then I like Haikiri. Hi- I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. People. <laughs> the same. Yeah. Ha- yeah. Haikiri or something like that. And then the last one sort of rotates because I like Particio. I like Throne. Um, oh, I, I feel like the other three, Ochet, Temenos, and Agnia, uh, Agnia, they sort of fall, like, I guess as my least favorite. Yeah. But I really don't dislike any of them. I like Particio because I got it. So essentially, right. Everyone has their own job. Then you start unlocking it where you can get a secondary job. And by using um, the, the job points, you unlock skills in that job to use. But also as you unlock a certain amount of, of those abilities, you unlock those like passive skills yeah is cool because essentially like you know you might want your main character to have one of these passives from like let's say the cleric job right but you don't actually want them to be a cleric so you just equip it like they'll have to use a lot of job points to like learn the abilities but then you can equip like one of those passives and like uh, the merchant patent passive has it where they get a uh, full bp or uh, like right off the bat no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Sorry, correction. They get that full power gauge right off the bat. And Particio's is that he could just fill up all of his uh, BPs to get the ex- extra battle like attacks. Yep. I really like that a lot, which is it, like that I feel like is so clutch because you can get essentially like eight moves off in the first two turns with Particio. And yeah. like that's really beneficial for breaking the, those shields, you know? Yeah, Particio was like key, the key figure in my final bo- final boss of the game battle. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and like I said, I feel like just being able to attack so much, and he also has like a huge range of weapons to use too. Yeah. Well, I've I've always been uh, the best defense is good offense. Yeah, it's yeah. Like I try to take them down before uh, they but they can take me down. So they had the Particio like so I my main was Throne, and then I had uh, Particio and hikari and and it was basically like okay well i'm gonna like use particio to just beef hikari for like the the monster like he did like oh he's got some insane attack oh yeah 
So I was just like, just feed him, just feed him the, the just let him, just let him BPs. rip, just feed him the BP, like just, yep. yep. Yeah, because Merchant can essentially give his, so BPs for people who don't know, uh, like I said, essentially each turn you gain a BP, and then it's almost sort of like Bravely Default, where you can like stack a few attacks, but it doesn't work the same, because you can't, mm. like, you need to earn them, you can't like go in debt, essentially. But yeah. as a Merchant job, uh, you can donate your bp to another character yeah so i've been yeah. using like i'll donate yeah either really like the i feel like the, the last fight i was really using oswald the elemental barrage a lot it was on his so he like you know hit a lot of weaknesses so yeah. i was like feeding him but i could also feed the bp to Casty because she can do those big like after they they know three attacks i could get everyone back up to like full health essentially in in one move so yeah, it, it's fun because it. I feel like between the the secondary jobs and stuff, and and all the different like uh, passive skills, there, I feel like there's a lot of depth for you to really get nerdy and like build like a super <laughs> yeah. team if you really wanted to, you know. And I think the merchant is the one that um, that hires like you can hire the the warriors to do like an attack and stuff because eh? I, I I can't remember who it was, but I remember I had um, I. I I'm pretty, I'm almost positive as Particio, where it's like you can spend like a hundred grand or whatever and then hire, it's like hire a group of warriors to do, like they'll attack every, like any attackable thing on the screen. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's another final boss thing I was doing. I was like in between like beefing up Hikari. I, I was just like dropping the, um, <laughs> dropping the money. I had, I was a broke man hand. when I finished that game because I spent all my <laughs> money on, uh, on, hiring uh people to attack on the turns and stuff because i remember i think i i had uh two i, I definitely had someone who was at least secondary was emergent and, and so i had like two two phases of people it's like just hire just hire just hire just, <laughs> just keep dropping money well it, it's so funny that like each character has like a different ability that you could sort of action ability. I think they call it like out of combat. So yeah, throne a, she's a thief, right? So you can just yeah. go through town stealing stuff. <laughs> yeah. From and my favorite is, uh, Agnia, the dancer. They just give it to her. Like, it's yeah. just like charm or, or whatever. Char and yeah. Charms the stuff. Like, and and you, like, there's no threat of getting caught or death. It's just like, here, take it. <laughs> yeah. Take, yeah. Take this Lance in my pocketbook and enjoy, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, okay, next dude. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I always find that funny. Or like for Casty in the beginning, her ability, it's like, oh, I could just like give people sleeping powder and put them to sleep. And I'm like, what? what? Like, why? But then I realized like down the road, you'll find some buildings where that are like have a guards or something, you know, so you'll yeah. like put them to sleep and you can sneak in that way. But uh, but yeah, it's it's crazy. This game is like Octopath one was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they, Octopath One had to die for Octopath Two to to be this amazing game. It is. Yeah. It's awesome that they like took to heart what was wrong with it, you know. And and by all like, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, you can nitpick things, and I'm sure you know there's some things that weren't fixed that you know looking back. But uh, but yeah, all the major complaints I remember having, I feel like are not in this game. No, like uh, to me, like it. it if Baldur's Gate Three is not not uh, released last year it, it would have been the runaway the, the game of the year Maybe. for me like easily like it's not even close like it was <laughs> Baldur's gate and and octopath were so far ahead of the rest it was insane but and then even well, like o octopath is in like Grace, i have a need to play pikmin 4 yeah <laughs> i have octopath uh, 2 as like my sixth favorite uh rpg of all time so it's like it's yeah it was just so good and uh, but I, I have to say that I am a little concerned about. Uh, so the the developer, so Square Enix, made this with uh, Acquire, I believe, is the developer's name. Uh, they kind of jointly made this, I guess. Uh, I, from what I remember, Team Asano, I think. Like I'm pretty sure Asano was like the lead on it, though. So, um, and he he's with Square, obviously, but from software just just uh, gobbled up uh, acquire for for their mm -hmm. own uh, purposes uh, made brought them under their umbrella there so uh it looks like from soft is looking and f f from like the pr the press release or whatever it sounds like you know they they want them to continue doing that uh, that type of retro game like i guess mm. that's something from can you soft. imagine like a super tough 
<laughs> like Dark Souls beats from <laughs> soft, but like in, in turn based combat, like I don't know yeah. how they do it, but but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. But we'll see what but, comes yeah. out of Acquire next, I guess. But man, they had such it was, I don't know, like because I at the same time, I could like maybe this means there's there won't be an Octopath 3, but it's like maybe it just maybe they just you know hit the home run and this was it like they they put put all their cards on the table and we got the game we needed so man we'll so see. good so good yeah and i know like on ps5 it's like well i shouldn't say i don't know now but it it, it was 30 bucks not that long ago yeah it's going i think it just kind of routinely goes on sale now because i remember i'm pretty sure i saw it on sale on steam too a few times so yeah, it's uh, still thirty bucks on Amazon for Octopath yeah. Two on uh, PS Five. So yeah, it's definitely worth picking up if you haven't played it yet. Yeah, so. and and like I said, I'm at sixty hours almost, uh, or what I say, fifty five, six. Some I'm in that range. I'm I'm getting close to to being a lot of hours. And for thirty, I mean, I got it as a Christmas gift, but for thirty bucks, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like fifty cent <laughs> an hour at this yeah. rate. Yeah, yeah. Not too scabby. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll get into uh, the, the true the t- retro. Yeah, the yeah <laughs> that that was uh, modern new retro. This is yeah we're getting into the the weeds now. The true retro. We're getting really retro because the thing I'm going to talk about uh, goes goes as far back as like uh, Commodore 64 and Apple II and all this. This is the stuff I was uh, I've been doing lately uh, while I've been trying to finish Infinite Wealth, Golden Sun, and and all this right you know before. Final Fantasy Seven uh, Rebirth comes out, so because mm. uh, I know as soon as Rebirth comes out, nothing all else over. will matter. It's all <laughs> yeah. over, but the whatever crime, yeah. whatever was playing is not going to be played again <laughs> until Rebirth is uh, probably finished, maybe twice. Game of the year twenty twenty four. Oh man, like it, between Infinite Wealth and and uh, Rebirth, I just don't know what else could even come close to those. <laughs> ones, so. We'll see, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I recently uh, had a birthday. Not too long ago, and and so my wife was asking me, you know, what what do you want? And it's like it's I have a uh, birthday that's close to Christmas, so it's one of those things where it's like I don't know, like I I got all this stuff for Christmas and I haven't even played half, you know, <laughs> three quarters of it yet. I I'm uh, I got like seven of the eight instruments through on uh, Link's Awakening because I, I got the original uh, Game Boy cartridge, and I've been playing some Game Boy Advance and stuff like the Golden Sun and that and. And I, I was so ingrained in the retro that I, I had uh, my eyes in the clouds and the thought, you know, if I'm going retro, I'm going all in. Mm. And uh, this is how I ended up with a Mister FPGA. So Ooh-wee. yeah, yeah. If you if you've heard, um, I know they've talked about it a few times on Retronauts. I'm pretty sure there was like an entire episode dev- de- uh, devoted to it, like last year, I think, where they were talking about all these things. So. Uh, so what the Mr. FPGA is, is, is basically it's this, this board that essentially, uh, like, uh, to kind of summarize it, it, it basically mimics the hardware of pretty much anything before, like, they're working on the Nintendo 64 core right now, and I guess it's, for the most part, it's playable, but anything before that, like, any, like, PS1 works great, you know, Sega, like, there's, you know, Master System, Genesis... I'm pretty sure like Saturn uh, works on there, like uh, all the old computers. But yeah, it's it's so it's it's this chip. It's called the DE10 Nano. Uh, you have to get this specific board. Like it's the only one that works. Not going to lie. It's a few bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're definitely a pretty penny. Yeah, like it costs it costs a, th- a few hundred. Uh, it, it, basically, the cost it of a, a couple a switch. switches, right? Yeah. Well, or, well one switch. Well, I'll switch up here anyway. Switch up here is about four hundred bucks. So, okay, yeah, it's it's about the same. But yeah, so you have to get this specific DE10 Nano, and then and that for the most part is like you, you just need that to kind of get started. 
I, I picked up some additional RAM um, for the machine so that I could play. Like, I don't think you can play PS1 without the RAM. So I had I picked up 128 megs of RAM, which is about another 80 bucks or so on top of that. That's how they get you. <laughs> yeah, it is how they get you. But so, yeah, so what it does is it basically mimics the hardware of uh, of the machine. So, like, you know, you you, you can get uh, pretty much any all the consoles on there. I was playing, you know, old Nintendo games. Uh, I've been playing um, Super Nintendo. I played. I just started a Master System. I'll, I'll get into <laughs> the. Can you play the, like Famicom? Yep. Yeah, you, you can play Famicom. So no, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I, I got. I downloaded like twenty Commodore sixty four games. So I've been I've been playing a few of those. Uh, again, uh, arcade games. I just went through a bunch of arcade games. Uh, one of the other things I got was the hardware for an arcade stick. And so I I hooked. I built my own arcade stick and we've been playing uh, these arcade games on, on the mister. You should, and, uh, 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 renegade. Well, that sounds familiar. I think I actually have that on there. There there. I know there's an NES version. Yeah. But I remember, uh, it was actually, man, it was like 2009 when I, I moved into my, it was my second year in college into apartment and my one roommate, had the, like yeah he must have had an arcade emulator and we played the yeah, renegade for hours oh my <laughs> it was super fun because like you'd get to the end and it's like it's like a beat-em-up and yeah. like all of a sudden like uh, like you get into like the the end and it's like they turn in like like mob bosses almost and they're like throwing knives at you and then they're shooting guns at you and it's one shot kill oh brutal, oh, man. brutal i got game. through yeah i have to but, see but you if should I got check that it out it's, it was it's super fun yeah well i was playing uh, so i had uh, double dragon on nes and then I saw the the double dragon on the arcade, and it's, it's, it's not even the same game. It's so much different. <laughs> it's like it's wild how how different it is. You wouldn't even think they were made in the same decade. Like that's that's how yeah. big of a difference the arcade was. But uh, yeah, so this FPGA is is uh, field programmable gate array. I think is the the term. Um, so yeah, it, it mimics like transistors and microchips from old hardware so that it, it feels ex- like you're playing the games because I've always played stuff on emulators and the games that I grew up with uh, that I play on emulators, you could kind of just tell they're a little off, like the, the timing's a little different or the, mm. the looks like ju- it's just a little, you know, not not enough. But it's a big deal, but it's just enough to where it's like, it's not exactly what I remember. But when you're playing on the Mr. FPGA, it's like, it's exactly it looks exactly like it. I've got a few different ways to play. There's uh, like with controllers, like th- that's one of the, the things I like the most is uh, you, you there's different ways to connect the original uh, controllers into the mister. So uh, so I have like one way of hook, uh, like a hardwired, like original Nintendo controller just hooked up right into it. Mm, but then I, right. um, I also discovered that 8BitDo uh, sells these kits where you can convert uh, your old controller into a Bluetooth. So it's basically like you just take the you take the whole kind of PCB board inside the controller out, take the wire out. You just put it to the side like you could put it back if you want. It's it's, it's not wrecking it or nothing. And you just drop this uh, PCB in that has like a built in battery. And then all of a sudden, I ha- like now I have an, an, an original NES controller that that's on Bluetooth. <laughs> and uh, the leg is like wow. nothing. It's like so I was uh, like I wanted to have the wired version just because I, I was a little worried about having that leg but the bluetooth is like it's, it's really good like the it's the the leg is barely noticeable like i played punch out which is like so dependent upon <laughs> like exact timing uh, yeah time I, I was just nailing it like it was with the bluetooth so i'm like ah this is this is really good now now when you bought yours uh did you you get like with the case and like the whole kit and caboodle because no <laughs> so you bought just the board just the board so the board itself um it it, uh, it has like um, the 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 stands like the uh, screw stands that it, so it's just kind of sitting. See that, yeah. But oh, yeah, so it's but got to sit on a table or something. Yeah, well, the, it came with like these silicone caps, so like it, so it has like silicone feet, but it's basically just like you know a circuit board that's kind of just it, it has like an acrylic uh, top to it, and uh, I did buy a. For like five bucks from Amazon, I got um, a heat sink to put on the chip. Mm. I know there's so it there's some different heat sink, or is it just because I guess it's well, it doesn't technically need the heat sink, but if you're playing like some later, ver- like if you're playing PS1, you're gonna want it because the chip will get pretty hot. Yeah, and I guess honestly, like it's easy enough to just throw a little on there. 
Yeah, but, I mean uh, the heat sink. You, like it's like I said, you can get like a pack of ten for five bucks, and then you can pull them off or put them on or whatever. Um, but there's there are some like there's some sites that sell uh, like additional boards that you can kind of stack onto them. Um, so usually when you like Google Mister FPGA, you'll see like this <laughs> this like Big Mac of <laughs> of PCB boards where it's like there's the the DE10 Nano, and then there's a USB kind of hub. That, that gets attached to it so that you can connect all your different uh, controllers and, and different, like I have a Bluetooth dongle connected to it so that I can use Bluetooth controllers on it. And there's, a, and you want to uh, be able to have a keyboard connected to it for like save states and stuff. And well, then there's, as I say, they, they got a whole, the whole case, the case USB hub. Oh yeah. Like you can get aluminum cases for it. And, and, and then there's uh, another board that you can stack on it that will add analog uh, audio and video so that you could connect the, the mister to like a CRT TV mm. and uh, you can actually out. get, but isn't the point to like be able to display it perfectly on an HD TV. It does. Yeah. So out of the box, it does that because there's an HDMI um, port. So like, that's what I'm doing now is like, I just like the beautiful, like crystal yeah, clear. It actually, I know that's the big, yeah. Like it looks like poop when you go, like to a HD TV when it's not through a mister, you know, well, like yeah, on that's... certain consoles, you know, the older ones, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Like they look, they look weirder. They look, they can look misshapen and stuff or... like, yeah. So this looks, this looks absolutely incredible on a, on a, a, t, a HDMI TV, like playing it on. I have like a 40 inch that I played on. It's just like, Oh my God, it just looks unbelievable. And then, yeah, there's a there's a board that you can get uh, even. So if you get the CRT out, then you can even you can still connect. It'll connect dually. So you could like stream stream uh, with the HDMI port and then play on a, a CRT TV or something at the same time. But it it displays it exactly like it, it does um, you know, on the CRT like that. Like, you know, if it was in an actual hardware, like it's that, um, you know, that that's uh, yeah spot on so it's yeah it's been really fun and uh for like the nintendo consoles and stuff like it com- it has save states uh built in so that you can do that um i was kind of disappointed though well I, i'll tell the story here i guess so Paige and i had talked about it in the past because i actually own the um the nes cartridge for ultima 4 and uh, i'd mentioned i i had it and I, i've had it for years and i've just never played it and then Paige wanted to play it when I, you know, when it was time. And so when I got the mister, I'm like, this just seems too perfect of an opportunity yeah. to play, play this game. The stars aligned. Yeah. So, I, so I'm like looking it up and I'm like, okay. Uh, so there's an Apple two version. There's an NES version. Uh, there's like all these different versions and then I'm reading and they're like, they're not, they don't even feel like the same game. <laughs> there's so many differences <laughs> between them. So, Cause like the, the, the PC, like there's an MS DOS version. You can actually get, anyone who's interested in playing it, you can get an MS-DOS version through GOG for free if you just wanted to play it on your PC. But, like, the PC version is much, much more, like, there's way more dialogue and more story and stuff, like, because you can actually, like, talk to all the NPCs and have, like, dialogue with them and stuff, whereas that's not in the NES version. And uh, anyway, long story short, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to play the uh, the Apple II version. And then uh, I'm like Googling it and I've come across that there's a Sega Master System version and it's actually people, a lot of people want like it the best because it's like a combination of uh, kind of the NES use a controller play style, but then it has all the dialogue from the piece from the uh, the, do- the DOS the ultimate version. The, the ultimate version. So yeah, it was so now I've started playing it on uh, the Se- the Sega Master System. But unfortunately, uh, for whatever, I guess nobody's, you know, set it up yet or whatever, but there's no save states in in the Sega Master System. So uh, so there is like an onboard, uh, you know, battery. So, you know, when I save there and turn it off, when I go back, it's, you know, I can still use my save, but it's it's the way Sega intended, I guess, with <laughs> whereas like I, I can't just save anywhere. I got to I got to save by their rules. Mm. But well, someone's got to get on that. Yeah, <laughs> there is such a while well, the community is in, is terrific. Like I can't like all there's so many people have done so many great uh, things with like getting the cores working and and getting all the add ons and everything. And and, you know, all people are doing this for free, you know, so it's incredible. You go to the discord 
it's funny. I had this, I had this funny, uh, situation where, so I was setting up my arcade stick and, uh, and I connected it to the mister and it wasn't, it wasn't really like, it wasn't taking, like it wasn't taking the inputs property or whatever. And I killed myself trying to figure this out. So I go to the mister discord and, you know, I, Said, Sounds like, oh, I'm having, you know, having this or whatever. And then there's like a couple of people just to pop in right like, well, you should try this. You try this. And I'm like, OK, OK. And, you know, and I'm, you know, working through it. And uh, I, I, I finally uh, figured out the problem was that um, I had installed the arcade stick upside down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, when, so when I was hitting up, I was actually hitting down. And when I was hitting left and right, they were the opposite. So it was, just don't make sense. <laughs> so it was confusing. And there's like when you look at the stick, like you, I there's nothing that to me that made it indicate like this way should be up or this way should be down. But as soon as I flipped it, it like everything fixed and, and the, the, the chap at the, the discord had a, had a good chuckle when I explained what happened. And, <laughs> Your but, pickle uh, head. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's been, uh, it's been fun, a fun go so far. Definitely uh, a great thing to have. Like I said, it's uh, the cost is a little, uh, a little hard to chew i'm sure for some but uh you know if you enjoy retro games and uh you know and and it, the technical i know i think the, the technical aspect can scare a lot of people off but it's been super easy like i haven't had to do any coding at all like it's been very straightforward heck and it seems like it's a helpful community yep yeah exactly if there's even if you can't figure it out there's someone around to, there's discords to hop in there's like there's even patreons now <laughs> of of like specifically for mister for like getting up upgrades for like people doing helping you with code and stuff like it's really it's a thriving community heck yeah but i know uh you, you yourself uh have been dipping into the the retro uh vibes and uh i i think when when you went in you kind of had a, an idea of what you were getting into i believe when you when you hit the purchase button on your your title yes yes uh hold on just one second actually and then i'll pick right back up all right sorry no no yeah so i've been thinking about playing a pokemon game for a for a while and obviously we can't support their new their new turds they're releasing these days <laughs> and you know i've, I've looked back at, at sort of some of those lists right sort of hey what's the best pokemon game and and usually you'd see pokemon black and white you know, if not at the top, close to the top, you know, you, usually it was in everyone's list pretty high up there. Uh, so it always been sort of on my radar. But yeah, th those games are stupid expensive. Even for just the cartridge is quite a bit of money. So I just never pulled the trigger. I was like, yeah, you know, I want to, but I just not for that kind of cabbage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then I was thinking about like, oh, like people do re repos all the time, like reproductions and and stuff and i know you could do the emulation and all that and i know i probably could have went and gotten you know whatever cartridge and done it myself but uh but essentially on etsy i found it was like 25 bucks or something give or take i forget exactly how much but uh in that range so i was like all right let's do it and it's funny it, it you know it it comes in it's got like the label looks pretty good you put it in and like instantly it pulls up a different icon and i was like oh no <laughs> I was like, dude, this guy sent me the wrong game or something, dude. Like, and then you click on it and then it brings up like a menu. And then there was Pokemon Black in there. And it looks like it said, like, I could probably load it with other games, too, if I had a way to, you know, download or, or you know, get the ROM onto it. But uh, but anyway, aside from it being a repro, uh, it, it pretty much works perfectly. You know, I, I couldn't tell any difference. But in terms of the game itself. Yeah, I mean, it's a Pokemon game, right? We, we all more or less know what a Pokemon game sort of has to offer. But uh, what's interesting about this one is that it has no returning Pokemon at all. So, you know, I Brand feel like new. a lot of times, right, like you go into a Pokemon game, you sort of, oh, I love Abra, you know, I love Alakazam, right? So, you know, I need to get an Abra and level them up, uh, you know. The, you know your favorites here and there and they always sort of find a way into your team of six but obviously when you've got uh, no one that you've ever used before it's it's all 
it's all new, uh, which is exciting. So, you know, you could sort of see like there were some like, oh, it's like that's the equivalent of a Pidgey, you know, like and, and kind of thing. And obviously, you know, there's going to be a little bit of, of, you know, similar looking Pokemon. But uh, for the most part, you know, I was finding the uh, variety to be pretty, pretty interesting, uh, you know, a couple of weird ones, but. Um, you know, I, I there was like a garbage Pokemon dude, like literally was like, r- like he was like a trash bag of garbage. Oh, I forget uh, the name. Garbador, I think it it's is. Not, yeah, it, it, but something like that. What's funny? It's funny because I've never came across. I don't think I've ever come across that Pokemon in 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 a Pokemon game, but I actually use them <laughs> quite often in Pokemon uh, decks because they have like. They have this. I can't. Oh, it's been so long. It's been like a couple of years now since I played Pokemon cards. But I think it was like they prevented the, the other player from using certain cards. Mm. So I I was using them block. in my deck to like block. I can't remember if it was like to block an evolution or to block the, like the use of special cards or something. So it's like I know exactly who you're talking about. But yeah, I've never actually seen <laughs> the Pokemon in the game before. So it's well, funny that, well, he's from black and white. There you go. But yeah, so yeah, so uh, you know, I've got through six gyms, and you know, I I decided to sort of hang it up, and not necessarily because the game was bad by any stretch of the imagination. Like it was good, but it was you know, it's a Pokemon game, right? Like you played one, you played them all. I feel like more or less, uh, you know, maybe outside of Arceus, but yeah, it, it was one of those things where I was just like, I'm enjoying what I'm doing here. Like this is fun. And like I could I could, you know, put in probably another I mean, I don't know, probably another five to ten hours to get the other two gyms. And then, you know, then do I want to do the elite four? You know, like, do I want to go, you know, I'll probably have to like perfect my team. And I was just thinking about like, do I want to put that much more time into it? And I was like, yeah, not not particularly. But, <laughs> you know, but it was fun. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't know exactly how many hours I put in because uh I guess I closed it and whatever it registered like that. So it was at like 130 hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I hate when that happens. But uh, but yeah, it, it is funny, though, like how devastating some Pokemon can be. You know, like the fourth gym I got up to and just every Pokemon I had was like weak to this guy. So he was just devastating me. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> I just need to go love, like find a good Pokemon and just like power level him to just clean house, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it is funny how how devastating those matchups can be even when like your pokemon are higher level, you know, like still getting getting sort of polished off because of the weaknesses and stuff. But it is also interesting right with having never played or, or never encountered most of these pokemon. Like I've recognized a few like you said from other games later on, but um I like to see the name and not know like when it's like so-and-so is about to throw out this Pokemon and I'm like, Ooh, I, I think that's a water type, but I, you know, but I don't really know. Yeah. So that actually, you know, definitely is a disadvantage, right? Because like, Oh, I'm going to keep my Pokemon. And then all of a sudden I realize, Oh crap. Like this guy's actually, you know, I'm weak to this. I need to switch out. Then you switch out and then that guy gets a free hit essentially. So yeah, it is interesting. Uh, to not know all those characters and and then sort of had the disadvantage there. But but yeah, I mean, like the the area, right? Unova or something like that, I believe is yeah. the region uh, is it was interesting. I liked, you know, doing that. Uh, the team plasma, their battle to like free the Pokemon by stealing the Pokemon is pretty funny. But but yeah, I mean, overall, it's fun. It, I mean, I was enjoying it, but like essentially i was like i'm liking octopath more and like instead of splitting time i'm just gonna put my time into octopath yeah did you uh did you feel because yeah you know it's supposed to be based on new york city were you getting those new york vibes i don't know <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's definitely one city that's huge and it's circular and it's sort of annoying to to traverse uh but like it didn't like scream out to me new york city like Aside from like, it's just a giant city, but I guess they did have like a Brooklyn like area where it's like, oh, they're all warehouses. But now all these artsy fartsy people moved in. (laughs) So that was sort of cute. Uh, But yeah, I mean, I I, like I guess I knew it was sort of like United States inspired to an extent of, some, you know, going into it. But like, I don't know. 
I guess not overly like, oh my God, this is New York, you know what I mean? But but like you could definitely feel those vibes. Yeah. It was funny, I'm looking at the starters and I'm like, I don't know who any of these <laughs> these three yeah, starters. Yeah, I went with <laughs> Tepig or Tepig, I guess is probably how you, you pronounce it. Yeah. And it's funny he turns I forgot the second one, but then he turns into to Embor. Oh, okay, and, I know who Embor is. Yeah. yeah, and he yeah, like the fighting fire guy, and he's yeah, yeah he, he's pretty epic. It's cool because I got I think it was like a TM or or some sort of special ability that wasn't like a standard when he learned, but it was essentially like the heavier, like the the bigger disparity in weight from your Pokemon to their Pokemon, the more damage. And I'm like, oh baby, Embor's a big boy, you know what I mean? So like he he was always unleashing the 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 big damage. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I was, it's one of those things too, where usually with like the starters, I'll, uh, I, I try to go with like what, what they'll be in the final evolution, but I'm like, like looking at Sni- like of, of the three starters, I probably like just based on those, I probably would have went with Snivy, but then, oh, uh, and then he turns into like the clowny looking one, right? Yeah. He turns into uh superior sur- superior, <laughs> like serpent superior, so he's just like a big snake, like a big grass snake. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I don't know that. Well, like a trouser snake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, yeah, that, so it's it's one of those things where it's like, I've heard it's one of the better ones, too. But it's funny because like the the Pokemon, you, you, you don't see them very much now. Like, I, I don't feel like they're that big, that they're they're really like you see all the to me. It's like you, the Gen 1s starters you see all the time uh, i don't remember the, uh, is it is diamond and pearl the one with uh the, the monkey Mudkip. the fire there's like the fire monkey or whatever i can't remember if that's the uh, he turns an in, infernape like or something like that i forget like you said yeah oh yeah the fire uh fire monkey yeah and oh and poop poop the pip, 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 pip is the yeah. water one yeah, what is his name? Hold on, I pulled it up. Uh, Turtwig is the Pil- Piplup and Chimchar. Yeah, that's oh Chimchar, that's it. Like that though, I see them quite a bit. So, it's, so I don't know. It's one of these things. Like some of them seem to be a little more iconic than others, and and, and like Pokemon Stadium or not Stadium, <laughs> Sword and Shield. Those those like took off huge, but I wonder how much of it had to do with the. Uh, uh, Super Switch. Smash Brothers with like, oh yeah, true. Incineroar and uh, becoming it, yeah, like it's a usable. funny. It must be a lot of pressure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. to like, all right, like, you know, these three are going to be like the most iconic from the the games. You know what I mean? To to know, like, oh man, you really got to sort of make sure you hit it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like e- even now, like I the the, the the you know Charizard and Bulbas. Ivysaur, no, no, Ivysaur is not the Venusaur. Venusaur, yep. Yeah, like all the, all those starters all are all still my favorites from the <laughs> from the first first generation and stuff, and they're all the starters. And that's and I think it's the same with Sword and Shield. Like I think I ended up liking the the starting Pokemon the mo- the most in those ones. But it's like I look, I, it's funny because even I'm looking at the other one, like Oshawott turns into Samurott, and I'm like, I don't know if I've ever seen Samurott in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it- funny because i mean I, i'm not a diehard pokemon guy you know but but obviously yeah those first three pokemon are so iconic and then like you said i think there are a few along the way that are like sort of stand out but yeah those three of the the bees knees yeah well it's good to know that the uh the repros work until you maybe you get to the final four and you find out like yeah, there's exactly. like a, a hack where there, it's just like some guy laughing at you like, Screw oh, you, you thought you were going to finish this game? Yeah, you dirty scalper, you're cheating. Yeah, but because I, I know, yeah, like I, I'm pretty sure I saw Pokemon Black and it was like two ninety nine at the retro game store. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you're that in- seems I'm assuming that's probably uh, like was full in box and, and everything. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I wish I. I wish I was into Pokemon back then and <laughs> had yeah. bought them because then I, I would have been. I mean, I, at this point, they probably would already been sold, but sit on a little yeah. gravy train. I I actually uh, when it was when the 3ds was kind of like in that fire sale for a while. Like after it was like 
I think a year or so after it came out, like, it just nobody was buying it, so they like oh, put they it on sale. It, yeah. And so I picked one up and I bought like all the Pokemon games. Like I have every 3DS Pokemon game, and I'm just waiting for those like to skyrocket in value, and then well, that, I'll just yeah. like, put my kids through college with those. I bought the Sun and Moon d- double pack with yeah. the Steel Book. And yeah, that one didn't didn't jump in price. I'm sure if I had held on to it for longer, it might have. But yeah, yeah. I was because like, I got like X and Y, Pokemon Sun, Pokemon Moon, uh, Alpha, it's Alpha and Omega Red. I can't remember the exact. There's like it's uh, Omega Red and or Alpha Blue or something like or Sapphire Blue. So I can't remember what it is, but it's like a remake of like an earlier generation or whatever. Like, oh yeah. Well, that yeah. was, I remember shoot. I remember getting going back, getting yeah, fire leaf and, and all those ones back in the day with the complete and box. Oh, I used to have the, the best game boy advanced complete and box collection, dude. Oh, like that was in my, like, I feel like the DS, I would, when I turned 14, I got my first job, you know, so I could actually buy games. So yeah. I feel like that GBA DS era, like, was prime for me to just like <laughs> like like I always laugh like feel the magic for the DS you know what I mean like like I was out there buying those games you know like yeah. I was I was literally buying everything <laughs> oh, like, I, know. I did I didn't save a penny of the money I made as a teenager every oh, dollar dude. was spent on video games yeah yeah it's so funny it's like if you sat on that and invested I'd be a billionaire <laughs> by now you know but it's like but no I had to get feel the magic <laughs> too good too good yeah. oh if, if, if i wish i had i probably traded in like old and like n64 games that are probably worth hundreds now f- for like probably the latest like madden, madden oh god yeah. 2006 or whatever it was at the time like kicking myself like you idiot this totally <laughs> makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah or even just to to have the like if you could go back and just you know when you could go to uh, the the game, you know, the flea market, I should say, and just pick up a, a box of, you know, box NES of, games for 20 yeah. bucks. And then all of a sudden, you know, that would be worth a, a hell of a lot more today. Oh, I know. I miss, I miss those days. Like and it, they weren't even that long ago, but it's just like yeah, everything it just sort seems of like blew up. everyone knows what the value of games are now. Like there's no there's no deals. Like the only deals are like PS3 and PS4 games now or ps2 yeah. games like it's it's just i don't know this is insane that how do you gotta like stumble across like a yeah like a garage sale and hope they and don't have internet fucked. access you know? <laughs> yeah that or like it's just like you know like we just don't care we just need to get rid of this stuff like buy it you yeah. know what i mean but yeah it's it's wild out there no good no good yeah. well uh, that probably about do it for this episode i know uh we're about two weeks away from from rebirth. I know you and I are. Oh man, we're just counting down the hours. Oh my friend, I hate him for having his <laughs> wedding that weekend. Dude, when I put two and two together, I was like, oh no. I hate that. I hate that the release date's a Friday because mine's coming in the mail, and it will. There's no way it's getting to me on Friday. Mm. I'm so well, mad. Well, if you think of this, if you just buy it digitally. You could play it right then and there, and then you can keep that physical copy in the wrapping. That's right. Uh, boom, boom. Don't tempt me. <laughs> that's a, well. It's funny. That's um, sort of what ended up happening with uh, Final Fantasy VII remake because it was um, it was ap- the, the the April of COVID in 2020, <laughs> and so I had pre ordered I pre ordered it. So like you know everything's in March, like you weren't even allowed to leave your house at that point. So then April comes around. I'm like, you know, I need my not, game. I can't. Yeah. I need my game. I can't get out. And like the store's not even open. Like it's, so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm buying this digitally. And then I think like a month later when it reopened, they're like, yeah, you know, remember when you pre-ordered that game? I'm like, uh, no dice, buddy. I already, I've already played it, finished it. Yeah. Well, that was I. I don't know if I'm fully on the 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 phys, digital train yet. I like having, you know, the physical copy, especially like I said, I just sold it, you know, and and made, got a, a pretty penny for my whole collection. But mm. I think it's the the dang uh, vouchers for Nintendo really got me good because, like, for Costco, I get 
a hundred bucks for ninety, and then I get to buy two sixty dollar games for ninety bucks. You know, yeah. So it's like it's been hard not to do that. But I guess honestly, for my PlayStation, for the most part, yeah, it's like I've got I've got a remake, you know, physical, and and I got with the pre order at GameStop the the steel case. So yeah, need that time. Yep, well, yeah, two Blu rays worth of data might take a couple of days to download anyway. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even <laughs> think about it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a race. You start downloading it the second yeah. you can, and you'll see what comes first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll just be me, me standing in a quarter somewhere uh, with a coffee in one hand and a cigarette in the other, just shaking. Yeah, and a bottle of vodka on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I need to play this game. Hey. Yeah, I, I downloaded the demo and I played like I popped it on and like watched the little intro thing. And I was like, yep. And I turned it off and I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like I'm going to play. What am I doing? Like, there's yeah. no reason to do myself right now. I, I couldn't. I like I looked at it like there's no way. Like if I play this for an hour and then try to tell myself that it, I'll have to wait another couple of weeks, like it's just not going to happen. I'd be on the first flight to Japan trying to beg for the game. Oh, I can't wait, dude. Yeah. Oh, JP and your dang wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be give me something. But because I was like, oh, so it actually comes out on Friday, not that Thursday. I'm pretty sure it's like Friday the 29th. I know it's the 29th and I'm pretty sure That's it's Thursday. Oh, is it a Thursday? Because oh. I, I leave that Friday. So I'll probably pick it up Thursday and not even play it. Because we're going to leave early Friday. So it's like, I'm just going to wait till I get back and fire it up on that Monday night, I think. Well, I think I'm going to be taking uh, March 1st as a vacation day then. Because uh, I was I was convinced that the that the, if it, comes uh, it was time, the Friday. Although they might, if you end up going digitally, they might let you preload it, you know. I'm sure if uh, they'll probably do that 30, where you give them an extra $30 and they'll give you oh, 24 yeah. extra hours or something. Yeah, you play early. yeah that's uh, it. That, <laughs> With the new World of Warcraft, I, I think that's Bl- Blizzard's new MO. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think if you buy like the digital deluxe thing, yeah, you get like early three access. days early or something, yeah. which is like in an MMO, it's like one of those things where it's like I could see it's like in the grand scheme of things, probably not going to give you a bit of a big advantage unless if you're trying to make money. Like, if you're gold, like those people that get out in professions early in MMOs, man, whoo. They, yeah. they can make a lot of gold in those games. So it'll be interesting to see. I I, I know uh, that's a, a big point of uh, contention with people. Yeah, I'll be bankrolling my materia at the Golden Saucer. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> well, you're still so far behind in in uh, 14. I know. Uh, I did make it to the Golden Saucer in 14. Yeah. Oh, well, I meant in, in terms of expansions. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was going to say Dawn Trail comes out uh this summer oh yeah no i'm I'm like four four expansions behind still i am Uh, caught i would have to go and do i guess like i i played the new expansion beat the story and then like any patch stuff that like has happened from now to then so i probably have like five to ten hours of stuff to do but i i feel like i probably am gonna have to do that i feel like right i feel like i gotta play dawn trail man 14 so good the last thing I did in fourteen was buy a house, and then and then I got thrown out of the 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 uh, oh, the group or whatever see, it was. Yeah, the, the free company. So yeah, so since so since I was thrown out of the free company, I lost my house. No good. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Can't did, recover she, now. She gave you all the money though for that house, right? <laughs> they did give me all the money. That's why like, I, I feel I bad. Like, Ooh, I'm gonna buy my house too, and they're like, "Good luck getting it with your own money, jerk." <laughs> <laughs> i felt so bad because uh, this poor person gave me like yeah. it was expensive too it was like uh, six million in-game dollars or something like it was it because uh, i was looking money, at it yeah. thinking like this will take me forever to get this money and then this just this one person oh here you know go ahead you know fig- see what it's like and i'm like oh this is nice and then i like just never played again <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it's one of those things like like for me, my my Final Fantasy fourteen playing will be to like experience the story and stuff and like and polish it out. But it is one of those like if you get really into it, man, like, yeah, between decorating houses and the, like there are a lot of really like difficult challenges as well. So 
But yeah. it's just MMOs, man, such a huge time sink. In a good way, <laughs> but like also, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess uh we'll we'll wrap it up here. I wanted to thank you, Casey, for joining me on this uh Octopath and Retro Talk tonight. Trip down know, memory lane. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, we'll definitely have uh, that that rebirth uh, discussions when the the game a few comes of out. Them, I'm sure. I, I mean, I imagine we'll probably have what maybe not that first week after, but like two weeks impressions, and then I'm sure another one when we've all well, at, sort at of- least two episodes, if yeah. not more. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure we'll be talking about this one for ages. And yeah. then, of course, that's not even including the game of the year discussion at the end of the year. That's we'll right. Yeah, there'll be no shortage. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, I know Jordan and I will be doing uh, an Infinite Wealth spoiler cast. That 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 might be in the next week or two. Uh, I'm 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 think I'm around eighty percent, so I'm wrapping that up now. And uh, we got a Golden Sun episode coming up as well. So, you... oh, good old Golden Sun, man. Like. I literally can like picture and feel and like in my parents' bedroom in summer with the AC blasting because it was the only <laughs> room in the house with AC, just playing the crap out of Golden Sun. Yeah. yeah, it's been an adventure. It's a better time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but until then, I want to uh, thank everyone for listening and we'll see everyone out at the next Thirsty Mage. Bye. Adios.